One of the biggest things runners confuse with running a faster 5K is the easy run. In this video, I'm gonna clear that up for you and help make your next run just a little bit easier. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here. Welcome and welcome back to episode three and how to run a faster 5K in 2022. This episode is geared specifically towards you know, beginner runners, those who have been running for a fair amount of time, even who have just struggled with trying to find that right balance of easy running. And so I come to you as a fellow runner here who's certainly made these mistakes and I wanna see you do better. And so I wanna share these tips with you. And in being totally transparent with you, I used primarily easier running to drop almost a minute in my 5K going down from 1959 to 1841. And the majority of my runs were in fact easy. Mistake number one, slow down when you first start off your run. One of the mistakes that I made a great deal in the beginning was feeling like I needed to hit my target pace at the beginning of the run. Our bodies don't necessarily work that well. It'd be better off to start a few minutes off the pace and then gradually build into it. I like what Coach Bennett says about being a smarter runner. And one of the smartest things you can do is allow your body time to warm up and build into your pace. Perhaps you're a morning runner and you jump straight out there, or maybe you're in the evening and the weight of the day is causing you not to be able to hit your overall pace first thing. Well, start off a little bit slower and you'll be able to build up to the pace that you need to be at and be more successful. Number two, focusing too much on mileage. Consistency precedes volume. One of the first things you have to do is establish just what your baseline is. What is the least amount of times you can commit to continuously over a given period of time. So say over a course of a month, you know that you can definitely do two times a week for 20 minutes. You do that two times a week, 20 minutes each time, that's eight times that you've been able to run in a month. Going over to the next month, maybe you add a day of 20 minutes in there. So now you've got now 12 days of running 20 minutes. That's consistency. Just uh, arbitrarily increasing your volume will not only puts you in a position to potentially get hurt, but it sets you up for a failure. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. One of the reasons that a lot of people fail on their New Year's goals isn't just because they didn't write them down, but they start off too aggressively. You go from running zero times a week to now five days a week, and then the next week is two, and then you try to get back to five, but now you're hurt, and so now you break, break back down to three, where if you just would've consistently done two or three days, that would allow you to get into a rhythm. And then once you establish that rhythm, then you can begin to increase your overall distance. The biggest mistake of them all is choosing the wrong overall pace. The solution, base your easy pace off of what actually just feels easy. One of the big mistakes that I see in terms of choosing that wrong overall pace is basing it on your goal pace. That's not a formula for success. Your best opportunity is to take the pace that you've already been kind of naturally given and gradually improve upon it and let the races that you do dictate whether or not you begin to increase that pace. Small kept secret, one of the reasons I struggled for multiple years on trying to break 20 minutes into 5K was that because I kept running my easier runs at like seven minutes and 30 seconds per mile, and then I would do a faster run, and by the time I would get to the third day in the week, my legs would be shot, I'd be tired, and so I continually just kept running like 21 minutes, 21 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 seconds, until one day over, cor uh, over course of a week, that was like, yo, I gotta take it easier on these easier days. <laughs> and I'm gonna, that way I'm gonna be able to run faster on my fast days. And lo and behold, by the time I got through like that two or three month period, I was able to run 19 minutes and 46 seconds. And I remember it so vividly because my wife has footage of it. I say all this to you to say that like, it's okay to make these mistakes, but you don't necessarily have to keep making them. Don't let your current ego get in the way of your future performance. Besides, you'll wanna do these runs easier so that way you're nice and well recovered and recharged so that way you can do faster workouts like these here. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.